horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hyo Silver, the Lone Ranger. Careless, Kirk. I could have blowed your head off. Not unless a dead man could pull a trigger, Ringo. Did you post center the minute you rode into camp? <laughs> Always one up on us, ain't he, Corey? Yeah. That's why you boys are taking orders instead of giving them. Did you get the supplies? Sure did, boss. That's what we went for. Something on your mind, Corey? Your big talk, mostly. Meaning what? Meaning you was full of promise about easy dough. I ain't seen none of it yet. Settle down, Corey. The boss knows what he's doing. I've been with him a long time. They don't come no smarter than him. Yeah. Well, I'm getting saddled, so I'm waiting for a payday. You ask me, I think something. Get up. If I paid you for thinking you'd starve to death. Now fix the fire and get some food. Here's the paper we got in gold down, boss. Oh, thanks, Rigo. You boys read the front page? No, what does it say? Well, listen to this. We may get that payday after all. A reward of $100 is being offered by Dan Sherwood, Gold Town lawyer, to anyone having information as to the whereabouts of Edgar Wellington, who was last seen in this area, one of the heirs to the Sam Bates estate. Bates, an aged prospector, died without realizing that a gold mine claim he owned was worth close to $100,000. Wellington is five foot eleven, wears glasses, speaks with an English accent, and is a crack pistol shot with either hand. Hey, that guy we met in Boulder Canyon, uh, the one pan in gold, he had an English accent. Well, that's right, Ringo. And he fits the rest of this description. <laughs> I bet he's still in Boulder Canyon, not realizing he's heir to a fortune. Only a hundred dollar reward for finding him. You call that big money? Shut up and listen. He's talking about a hundred thousand. Not a hundred thousand. Fifty thousand. There's another heir mentioned here in this paper. We get half, he gets half. Yeah, who is it? Uh, somebody they call the Lone Ranger. The Lone Ranger? Kirk, you out of your mind? He's dynamite. Dynamite's only dangerous in the hands of an incompetent. I wouldn't pass a setup like this if the King of England was the other heir. Afternoon. Hello there again. I thought you gentlemen were riding north. What is this? What do you want? Just want to get to know you, Wellington. Real well. I want to learn all about your habits, where you were born, how you live. But most important, I want to hear you talk. Talk a lot. Take. <laughs> Glasses are broken. What are you going to do now, boss? Get some more. Where? They ain't easy to buy out west. You ought to do more reading, Corey. Right there. Store in Goldtown. You want the same ad this week, Mr. Boggs? Oh, sure. Say, son, I trust I'll have my same spot on the front page there. Afraid not, Mr. Boggs. That news of Sam Bates' inheritance is still selling lots of papers. Oh, they haven't found that Englishman yet, huh? Nope. Well, all right, my boy. I bowed to the rights of the press, son. Barnaby Boggs Emporium. Brother, that's good. Well, welcome, sir. Welcome to Barnaby Boggs Emporium. I noticed your advertisement for eyeglasses in the newspaper. Oh, yeah, sure, sure. Right here, sir. Yes, sir. There you are. There's a pair. Say, you're English, ain't you? Yes, I'm here on business. You have a Mr. Sherwood in Goldtown, don't you? The lawyer? Oh, sure. Say, you're not the fellow they've been looking for, that Edward Wellington, are you? Edgar. Well, what do you know? Well, sir, it's certainly a pleasure to serve you, neighbor, uh, at least Sir Edgar. 
Yes, sir, a pleasure and an honor to have you visit my establishment here. It certainly is an honor, sir. I can't even see the chart with these. Haven't you something a little weaker? Oh, <laughs> Barnaby Boggs has got all kinds, uh, Sir Edgar. Yeah, try those. Uh, say, you know, the masked man's going to be along pretty soon. He has a share in the money, too, you know. Yes. I'm anxious to meet the masked man. Jimmy Sammy, this rear door to Laura Sherwood's office? Yes, Tom. It's best we enter this way. You know my mask always starts questions. What? Don't be alarmed, Mr. Sherwood. Who are you? This might help to identify me. Silver bullet. Oh, of course, a masked man and his Indian friend, but I've heard of a white horse, a magnificent stallion. Up, boy. In addition, I have a letter from my friend, the governor. Hmm, well, that's all the proof I need. Come on in. I've been expecting you. We can get started on this inheritance business right away. I'm selling the mine today and we'll have the hundred thousand dollars this afternoon. We didn't get a copy of the newspaper until two days ago. Sam Bates's death was quite a shock. Him fine man. Yes, we're going to miss old Sam here in Gold Town. He must have thought very highly of you. I saved his life once when he fell ill on the trail. I never expected this kind of repayment or wanted it. Sam's friendship was enough for me. You find other fellow yet? You mean the Englishman? No, I haven't heard a word from him. You know, it's too bad Sam died before realizing his wealth. He had a big dream about what he'd do with money if he ever got any. You mean the mining college idea? Yes. What do you mean, Kimisabi? Well, Sam Bates was different than most prospectors, Tano. He hated the waste and destruction and went with the desire to take gold from the ground. He knew wealth was there in a hundred other forms. Unfortunately, there were very few men who knew it. So he wanted to start a mining college to teach young men the true value of our natural resources. Mm, that very fine plan would help territory very much. Yes, it's too bad it'll never be carried out. It still can be, Mr. Sherwood, with the money Sam Bates left. You mean you'd give up your share of Sam's estate? Yes, but I'm afraid it would take the other half, too. Then it seems a great deal depends on Mr. Wellington, when and if he arrives. I dare say, gentlemen. It looks as if I've arrived just in time. Wellington? That's correct, Edgar Wellington. I'm terribly sorry I couldn't get here sooner, but I've been prospecting in Boulder Canyon. News is rather scarce out there. Yes, I would imagine. Oh, this is Tonto, and this is the man who's going to inherit the other half of Sam's estate. How do you? How do you do? My old friend Sam spoke very highly of you, masked man. His death was a terrible thing. I only wish there was some way that I could express my feelings. There is, sir. We were just talking about it. Oh? He undoubtedly told you about the college. I'm afraid I don't quite follow you. Sam wanted to see a mining college built right here on the territory. One like they have in the East. Oh, yes, I do believe he mentioned something or other about a college. It can become a reality now with your cooperation. <laughs> and with my inheritance money, I presume. Is that right? Well, it's a noble thought, just like old Sam. But don't you think that we ought to get the money before we spend it? Oh, yes, of course. I have the papers right here on my desk. If you gentlemen will sign them, it will ease the way for the monies to be paid. I have the masked man identification, and Sam left the letter that was sent to him and signed by you. So I can check your signature by this one. Now, if you'll be good enough to sign the copies. Well, uh, let me see. This is the one, isn't it? Well, if you don't mind, I'd like to look these over, Mr. Sherwood. The fine print, you know. I can assure you, sir, they're in order. Oh, please don't take offense. It's just that I don't like to sign anything without looking it over at first. I'll read this very carefully this evening and return it tomorrow morning. Very well, if that's your wish, Mr. Wellington. You have accommodations here in town? Oh, yes. Everything's arranged. And you, sir? Well, Tana will set up camp east of town. I'll join him after I visit a friend of mine living here. Then we'll meet here tomorrow morning. Agreed? Agreed. Well, goodbye until tomorrow. Bye. Bye, sir. You visit Barnaby Boggs? Yes. I'd like to see how he's getting along. What's wrong, Kimisabi? You worried? Not worried, Tunnel. 
Just puzzled. About man inside, uh, Wellington? Yes. Doesn't it seem strange to you that a man would want to look over papers that make him heir to $50,000? Much sudden money make man do many strange things, Kimisati. Uh, you're probably right, Tonto. Me make camp. Meet you later. Howdy, Barnaby. Well, bless me if it isn't my friend, the masked man. How are you? You know, you're visiting my humble emporium is truly an honor. Thank you, Barnaby. Are you keeping out of trouble? Trouble? Oh, my friend, since you showed me the ways of justice and honesty, trouble is a word completely foreign to my vocabulary. Oh, it's true at one time that I was a purveyor of snake oil medicines, and I have separated a few local yokels from their money playing the shell game. But now, my friend, I stand before you a model of justice, honesty, truth, and uh, uh, how is our uh, noble friend Tonto? Well, he's setting up camp. I just dropped by to say hello. Oh, you're leaving so soon? No, I'll be here for a day or so. Some business matters to settle. Uh, yes, and I'm well aware of those business matters. Your newly acquired wealth, my friend, is not a secret to the people of Gold Town. Tell me, Barnaby, is this another one of your questionable business ventures? Oh, don't look through those, my friend. You'll put your eyes out. Neighbor, this is a legitimate business venture. I have studied the charts and the pamphlets from the optical company and spurred on by a desire to help my fellow man, I have finally mastered the mysterious art of fitting eyeglasses. Barnaby, you sound convincing, but I'll withhold my judgment because I have seen your operations in the past. They weren't so good. Has the venture been successful? Well, now, to tell you the truth, a little slow at first. But I'll tell you something else, my friend, that since the English air has been a customer of my emporium, people are going to start flocking to this place. Edgar Wellington bought glasses here? Yes, yes, a very difficult man to fit, too. Well, why do you say difficult? Well, you know, I read in the newspaper that he used a very strong pair of glasses. And when he come in here and told me that his old glasses had been broken, I fitted him with the strongest pair in the place. The man couldn't even see through them. Is that so? Yes. Then I fitted him with a weaker pair, and still weaker. And finally, he bought the weakest pair in stock. Uh, you know, between you and I, I think he wears them, just figures he looks distinguished. You know, some gents are like that, you know. Yes, I know what you mean. Holy cow! Oh, well, now, don't worry, Tommy. This man's a friend of mine. He's not a hold-up man. What about the mask? It's a symbol of justice, Tommy. Gee, for a minute, I thought it was my chance to get a big story. Oh, so you're a newspaper man. Oh, yes, yeah. he's a fine boy. A little bit over-anxious to become a newspaper reporter, but he's still a fine boy. Sorry I can't give you a story, Tommy. But if you keep your ears open, you might run into a big one before you know it. Bye, Tommy. Adios, Barnaby. Uh, my best regards to Tonto. Golly, Mr. Boggs, who is that man? That's the finest man you'll ever meet. Yes, sir, the very finest. You mean you want us to ambush the masked man, huh? You heard me. I thought you said you put your act over that he wasn't suspicious. That's right, I did, but he's smarter than I figured on. I want him out of the way just so that nothing comes between me and that inheritance. That's a big order, boss. One that shouldn't be too tough for you boys. He sent his Indian friend to set up camp. The masked man will be riding the East Road out of town, alone. We'll be riding. Don't miss. If everything goes well, we'll be on our way tomorrow with $50,000. What about him? <laughs> we got all the necessary papers right here. We haven't got a problem. You'll have one, getting me to sign. That won't be difficult, I assure you.
your shot, Kimisari, right? Fast from camp. Two men ambushed me, Tano. One of them got away. This one wasn't as fortunate. Why them try to kill you? I think our friend Edgar Wellington is behind it. And Wellington wants you dead? I'm not sure the man we met in town really is Wellington. Uh, him had credentials. Well, Tano, we could have stolen him. Barnaby Boggs said he bought weak glasses. He's supposed to need strong ones. That's not much proof, Kimisani. I know, Tano. Right now, we better take this fellow into town and report this to the coroner. Then tomorrow in the lawyer's office, if I'm right about the man who calls himself Wellington, there's one thing that should prove it. Gentlemen, I hope I haven't kept you waiting. But I had a little accident. Say, that looks bad. Yes. The hammer slipped this morning while I was working on the trigger spring. I should have known better than to work on a loaded gun. An embarrassing mistake for an expert marksman to make. Uh, yes, of course. Well, I trust you're ready to sign the papers now. Oh, but I have signed them, Mr. Sherwood. Lucky thing. Did it just before I hurt my hand. But I want you to sign them in front of witnesses. Then everything would have been finished. I have the $100,000 in the satchel. Oh, I'm terribly sorry, but of course you understand. Hmm, this looks like a bona fide signature. The signature may be, but that's no proof that this man is Wellington. Well, now look here, who are you to be doubting me? How do I know you're who you claim to be? He has shown me a silver bullet, Mr. Wellington, and a personal letter from the governor. That's all the proof I need. Well, so what more could I do? I'll sign with my left hand if that will help. It should be easy to prove your identity, Wellington. Use your gun. My gun? If you're Edgar Wellington, you're an expert shot with either hand. Tunnel. The window, please. See that weather vane across the street? That's an impossible target. Is it? Let's find out. Your turn, Mr. Wellington. Why don't you fire, Mr. Wellington? Well... What's all the shooting? All of you stand still. The boy gets hurt. Tell him. We can't take the chance. Well, you're using good sense, mass man. Keep on using it by dropping your guns. You too, Indian. Why, the accent's gone. You are an imposter. You discovered that a little late, Mr. Sherwood. I'm leaving town now with the entire $100,000 instead of just my inherited half. It'll be the first time in history that a man ever carried a mining college out of town in a satchel. Now get into the closet, all of you. Go on. Go on. You all right, Tommy? Sure, I... I'm sorry about what happened. I just... That's all right, son. The important thing is getting that money back and finding the real Edgar Wellington if he's still alive. What's wrong, boss? Get the saddle, Ringo. The masquerade's over. We've got the entire hundred thousand dollars. See if Wellington's inside, Tano. I'll try to capture the other two. They may be wanted for past crimes as well as this one.
boy, Silver. I'll take over from here. All right, mister, let's go. There's a cell waiting for you and your partners. I say, Mr. Boggs, I do wish you'd let me pay you for these new glasses. Why, no, certainly not. My goodness, if you and a mass friend can donate a fortune to build the Sam Bates Mining College, the least I can do is to donate a pair of eyeglasses. Thanks again for your decision, Mr. Wellington. Education is going to play a vital part in the growing of the West. You're both doing a very fine thing. Nevertheless, I must admit that my motives weren't entirely philanthropic. Well, what do you mean? My mining prospecting luck was so bad that I intend to be the first student in the new college. <laughs> <laughs> well, goodbye, my friends. Goodbye. Goodbye. So long, Tommy. Goodbye. My boss said he'd let me do a story with my own byline. And gosh, just to think, that story's going to be about the Lone Ranger. <laughs> Oh, <laughs>